Morning, morning. Trevor Bernard here. We come to look at small ruminants again. We're going to be looking at some rabbits here. I'm here standing beside a pranganut tree. I call it pranganut. People have different pronunciation. It bears this fruit. And we are looking at some of the feed that the rabbits eat. On this farm, well, it's not a farm, it's a homestead. They rear the rabbits here for their own purposes. They sell them as pets and they, you know, eat them and so forth. But the animals that are here, they are just let out in the yard and they just forage and eat whatever is here on the property that is here. So these rabbits breed on the ground, run up and down. We can hardly find them. They are all over the yard, just running up and down wild and um, having kits and doing everything. Just a reminder now that remember, ramina, rabbits eat forages and they also are pseudo ruminants, which is also, they call it, I think, monogastric. Now, rabbits don't chew their cud. Me, it, it really means, all that fancy word means they have one stomach, because one stomach that comes right through. And one of the things because of that, they don't absorb nutrients from the forages that they eat, as well as, say, a goat or, you know, which has four compartments. The stomach is a four compartment, meaning the goat, sheep, and, and so forth. So rabbits, I think pigs, and I think horses, you know, they have this kind of uh, gastric stomach. Now, what I'm going to be taking a look at here is what these rabbits eat while they are let out here. They love the pranganut. They love this, the leaves and, you know, the twigs. When the leaves drop off the tree, they eat the pranganut. I didn't even know this, but one of the things that they also love, the rabbits come around to the front of here and they call this plant tuna. This is what I know it has, tuna. Um, if you can see the areas that the rabbits are eating here, they love it. I, don't, I didn't know that they, they love this so much, but they eat the tuna. Right along this fence line, the tuna is planted here and you can see them munching. They were munching on this a while ago, but when I came, they ran away. You can see all the areas that they've been eating this tuna. And they seem to eat the younger part a lot too. But they eat on this tuna and feed on it. They also, they also eat a small amount of the noni. They pick at the, the noni, but they don't... Aloe vera. The aloe vera, sorry. And you know that this tuna plant, it also bears this red fruit. It bears this fruit. This is a tall tree of the, of the tuna that the rabbits like to eat. And this is a, a drought tolerant. Um, I don't know the nutritional value, but these rabbits in the wild eat a lot of that. So there are mango trees in this property. Lots of mango trees. They love the mango leaves. They love the, the mangoes when it's mango season. You see them here eating a lot of the mangoes. These mangoes are now blossoming. They eat a lot of mangoes and the leaves and, and, and so forth. So they just feed on all the grass or the twigs or anything that is growing on the ground. This homestead here, they do not really feed the animals. They just forage on the property as they walk around. Another thing that they love is the noni. Let us have a look at the noni tree. So this is one of the noni tree. It carries a very big leaf. And this is the fruit from the noni. You know, people say it has medicinal values and so forth. There's a ripe noni. So what happens is that the leaves drop off the noni tree and the rabbits eat it. And they love the noni leaves. They eat a lot of this noni leaf. And they actually eat the noni also. So they go and they select any forage that they like along the, the, the property. So a lot of feeding is here. One of the things is that, as I said before, they let out their rabbits and the rabbits is just all over the property. They just run up and down and, and eat and live and breed up as they go along. This is the type of environment that they grow the animals in. And they do very well here. One of the problems they had was with cats. Cats used to slaughter some of the animals and, you know, they also had a problem with the rain. When a lot of rain fell the other day, they didn't do, have a proper shedding or anything and some of the rabbits died in the, in the rain. But a few survived. So one of the things, in your, in your backyard, you can actually grow the rabbits on the ground and they seem to do very well. And there's not a lot of parasite problems and so forth when you grow them in this environment. So 
if you are at home please remember that they say three or four rabbits grown in your yard are grown can provide enough protein for your family so rabbit rearing is a very good thing and it's a very healthy meat it's also one of the alkaline meats that we can eat and very important we're going to see if we can see some of these rabbits foraging outside in the yard i don't know if we'll get to catch any of them but we're going to have a look at this now So one of the things in the wild that the rabbits does, they burrow under the ground and the baby's actually born underground. This is a burrow that um, a mother used and she have her kittens. So they dig a hole under the ground and they have the young ones under the ground like this. And then one day you will see five or eight or ten little kittens coming out and they just walk and, and, and just move around. Now I was telling you about the, the fact that the cats will kill the kittens. So whenever the kittens come out of the hole, the farmer, they usually take the kittens and lock them up in a cage and grow them. And when they reach a certain size, they let them out back on the ground. Because the truth is, the cats, and, the cats can't trouble the big mature rabbits. They only trouble the little small baby young ones when they just come out. But it's a beautiful sight to see them coming out of these holes after they have their kittens and, you know, run around the yard. They also, when they are having these kittens and they are running about the yard, they also always look very healthy and strong and powerful. Very, very majestic when you see them around. It's, it's a very nice thing to see, but we have to protect them also. The flood was a big problem though. When we had that three weeks of rain, when the rain falls, sometimes it full up these holes with water, water go in the hole, and if kittens are there, they will drown and different things like that. I think they told me that they lost about 24 animals when we had those flood rains. Normally, if the rain only falls for a day or fall every now and again, they don't lose any rabbit. They usually know what to do and take care of themselves. But the whole yard became a flood and, and, and some rabbits were lost. So they don't have a, a lot right here now. But the beauty about this kind of um, growing way of growing the rabbits is that they don't have to buy feeding. They just have water here and the rabbits just live on whatever drops on the ground. Any leaves or any twigs or anything that is here, they just feed on it. They love breadfruit leaf, mango leaf, the pranga nut. They like the noni leaves, as I showed you. The noni, they eat the noni fruits. They eat, they don't like pear leaves. They seem to don't like eating the pear leaves. They also like um, guava. They eat the guava and, and so forth and, and live. And you know, these animals, the rabbits are reared with the turkeys, the common fowl, this is a natural farm. So they rear them with turkeys and guinea chick and you know, you look at these peel neck fowl. They have some peel neck here and while some people have never seen them, the turkey, the peel neck fowl, the roosters, you know. They are all just here foraging on the ground and eating and doing a natural way. So this is another way of doing it and you know, very low maintenance. So this is one of the cages that when the young ones, they, they just have them on the ground like this. When they have young ones, they put them inside here, grow them to a certain size, and then they let them back out. So these are some sort of wild rabbits. They are very difficult to catch, I understand. So this is a natural way of growing rabbits. Very, very simple. And the rabbits that are produced here are looks very, very big and powerful. As a matter of fact, when they lock up the young ones and feed them on pellets, they don't look as good as when they let them out and they are running around and just breeding naturally. So I'm very happy to bring this natural way of rearing rabbit. Thank you so much for watching and I'm very happy to bring this to you because I really haven't heard a lot of people talking about this. I've never heard anybody talking about it and I'm very happy to bring this to you. Please subscribe to my channel and thanks for watching.